Hello, my name is John Brisson, author of Fix Your Gut and Health Coach. Welcome to the Fix Your Gut YouTube channel. Today we're going to discuss the true cause of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, which is Mycobacterium avium paratuberculosis, which is a um, bacterium in um, that is found in ruminant animal meat and ruminant animal products. Uh, that are infected with the said uh, bacterium. Now, Mycobacteria is a genus of actinobacteria, and actinobacteria, uh, there are some probiotic actinobacteria, like bifidobacterium, for example. They're not all bad. Now, um, they also cause, well, Mycobacterium also causes a disease, especially my, Mycobacterium maybe in paratuberculosis, in cattle, very similar to um, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, which is known as Johann's disease, um, where there's a lot of intestinal bleeding, a lot of um, you know flatulence, um, inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract, abdominal pain for cattle, and it, it can it can kill them. Um, it's a very more of acute disease where MAP is more of a colonization. Of the digestive tract that leads to long-term chronic diseases like ulcerative colitis um, and Crohn's disease. Now, ulcerative colitis, in and of itself, um, is is primarily located in the colon. So, if you get a uh, exposed to MAP uh, primarily within the colon, and your body is not able to, you know, eliminate it or reduce it because it's very slow growing in its process, okay, of, of, of taking over one's microbiome. Um, and so it, it, if your body is not able to expel it, maybe through some gen genetic po polymorphisms that make you weak to uh, the bacteria, it could take, if you get enough, get big enough dose of it, it could take root within your gastrointestinal tract and start displacing normal flora. So if it sticks primarily to the colon, then it causes ulcerative colitis, uh, which you know, of course, with many uh, symptoms with ulcerative colitis, um, causing inflammation in the colon, constant diarrhea. Sometimes you'll have uh, bleeding if it's if it's severe enough, intestinal pain. Um, if, if an acute infection occurs from the Mycobacterium avium paratuberculosis or MAP, I'm gonna start calling it MAP from now on, MAP. Um, it'll cause fever. You might even get sepsis if it becomes. Um, uh, worse enough because uh, the bacteria produces toxins uh, that ca trigger inflammation in the mucosal barrier of the intestinal tract um, because the immune system reacts very negatively to said toxins. And um, the toxins also poison um, the cells of the uh, intestinal wall as well and uh, triggering excess inflammation. So it causes ulcerations within the colon that can actually, if severe enough, can become open sores. Um, so usually a person who um, ha believes that they have ulcerative colitis, they generally um, go to the doctor because they have diarrhea, because they have abdominal cramping, because they see blood in their stool, uh, usually red blood, but sometimes if it's up severe enough in the digestive tract, it can become black. Uh, so they'll start you know, running blood tests to determine if a person is anemic from blood loss, if their hemoglobin is low. Um, they might do a stool sample to see if there's excess white blood cell, or they might test something called calprotectin, which calprotectin is an immune marker for the digestive tract, and if it's usually higher than 100, if it's definitely within the 2 to 300 range or even higher than that, that can be very much indicated that severe um, immune dysregulation of the immune system is occurring at the mucosal barrier and usually coincides with a person having ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. Now, occasionally... Uh, colonoscopy also might be done to look at the state of the colon uh, to see if there's ulcers or there's open sores or any perforations in the colon, which perforations are like holes, which are very serious because then, you know, your microbiome can leak into the peritoneal per area and then in doing so can cause massive infection and sepsis. Um, so, um, it's, it's, it's very serious if that happens, um, but it doesn't happen very often. Um, and, and rarely, you know, people with ulcerative colitis, they can develop arthritis, but it's more common in people with Crohn's disease. Now, the difference between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, the, even though they're both m m more likely caused by this MAP bacteria, is the location of how it affects the body. For people with ulcerative colitis, the infection or the dysbiosis of MAP is primarily kept to their colon. 
In Crohn's disease, it can be spread throughout their digestive tract, um, even up, you know, mainly situated more in their ileum, uh, which is the end of the large intestine. Um, and they'll usually have diarrhea, abdominal pain, gallstones, bloating, weight loss, uh, diarrhea with red blood or black blood, depending on how far up the infection is or the dysbiosis of MAP is. But they're more prone, people with Crohn's disease are more prone to get uh, systemic uh, issues. They're more prone to get... Um, they're more prone to get uh, arthritis and, and eye issues like uveitis and have inflammation of the eyes and trouble seeing or dermatitis or skin affections. So they're more prone to systemic effects of having a dysbiosis of MAP than ulcerative, press with ulcerative colitis where it mainly sticks to their colon. Um, so those seems to be the, the two differences between the two diseases, even though they're caused by the same pathogen, which is Mycobacterium avium paratuberculosis, um, which is found in ruminant animals if they are infected with it. So a person with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, it's usually best for them to give up all ruminant animal products, including cow, sheep, goat, deer. They can do okay with pig and they can do okay with birds. Or fish, um, it usually doesn't cause as much issues as an affected ruminant animal would. Um, however, um, and we're going to read. I'm going to read some snippets from both my blog article and from a study that was done in 2010. It was more of a paper uh, about them being connected. But you know, not most people who ingest um, animal dairy to some degree, including myself. I've probably been exposed to MAP at one point or another. However, I probably didn't get infected with it because I probably don't have the genes weak uh, for to become infected with the MAP bacteria or my microbiome was healthy enough for it just to pass through me without uh, colonizing my intestinal tract. Um, so why don't we read... Um, MAP has recently been discovered as a zoological disease, a disease that can be transferred from animals to humans or vice versa. MAP can be transferred to humans when contact with infected cattle feces occurs, drinking improperly properly treated farm runoff water, ingested uh, beef, um, or ingesting milk and dairy products from infected cattle, or goats, or sheep, or deer, if you're ingesting deer meat. There are cases of there are case studies identifying farmers with MAP after contact with aerosolized cow feces, meaning breathing the cow feces on in the farm from affected cows. MAP infections also originate from cattle farm runoff encountering a municipal drinking water not being properly filtrated. MAP is very resistant bacterium that can survive up to nine months in mud, a year in cow manure, and up to two years in water. Standard industrial water treatments such as filtration systems and chlorination may prove to be an ineffective treatment against eliminating MAP from the water supply. However, reverse osmosis, filtration, and um, distillation should be good enough uh, to make sure that the water that you're ingested is, is MAP-free. Um, MAP uh, is also able to survive pasteurization because it, 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 it surrounds itself in fat globules, so it is not killed by standard pasteurization techniques, as well as it is not killed from cooking um, mainly. It can also survive standard cook, cooking temperatures that you usually use with beef, which is around 165 degrees Fahrenheit um, for something to be well done. And MAP also is resistant to nitrates and the smoking process too. So it's a very hardy bacteria that's very difficult to to uh, reduce or get rid of. So pretty much people with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, if it is caused by MAP, and in most cases it is, they have to avoid uh, ruminant animal products uh, possibly for life once they get their infection low down. And most of the time, uh, removing uh, ruminant animal products and meat from the di diet, you know, dairy, milk, cheese, butter, ghee, um, ice cream, um, and enjoy, stop eating the meat, most of the time that'll work. Most of the time, just doing that alone, a person with ulcerative Christ and Crohn's disease, unless they have a severe dysbiosis of MAP in the digestive tract, usually seems some sort of relief from their symptoms. Um, and when they go back and eat um, the meat, if it is infected, they'll have their symptoms come back. Now, it's interesting enough, just like we see 
uh, uh, tick disease causing alpha gal allergens where if you go eat red meat which has alpha gal in it and you have this tick borne sensitivity to it that you didn't have obviously previously beforehand if you were bit by a tick and it gives it to you you become allergic to red meat and so when you eat red meat you have severe digestive issues or, or, or skin irritation or mood issues um it, it because of alpha gal pro so it seems to me that for map there's some people who are even if the cattle uh or, or, or ruminant animal doesn't seem to be infected by um the bacteria that a person who eats um the meat can still somehow be sensitive to it and i haven't quite figured out why that may be yet that does seem to be the case now some people will say well i've seen um people go on a really grass-fed raw dairy and grass-fed organic meat diet of ruminant animals and they were able to heal their ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease um, then it was able to go in remission so you know why are you not uh, you know recommending people to do so and that's because of two things one those people were very lucky it is likely that the ruminant animals that they were ingesting the meat from and that they were ingesting the dairy from were not infected with map if you have a very, very small family farm that takes very good care of their animals, then a likelihood of them being infected with MAP is very low. Okay? So that might be why. Second is that they may not have... Their, their, MAP is not the cause of all of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, but it seems to be a cause, a big cause if for most. Um, at least I would say anywhere of 80 to 90% of the cases. So there's a possibility that the person's ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease was just not caused by MAP. And so they were not sensitive to it. So here is a paper by Ellen S. Pierce, and there are many. You can Google Microbacterium avian paratuberculosis and Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and you will get many, many different studies um, that talk about the correlation between this microbacterium and the cause being the cause of both diseases. So I'm going to read a little bit from this paper, and it gives a good broad overview of why I think that um, both these diseases are caused by this bacteria. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease is Mycobacterium avium subspecies paratuberculosis, the common vil villain, by Ellen S. Pierce. Mycobacterium avium subspecies par paratuberculosis, or MAP, causes a chronic disease of the intestines in dairy cows and wide range of other animals, including non-human primates, called yo Yoni's disease. MAP is consistently identified by a variety of techniques in humans with Crohn's disease. The research investigating the presence of MAP in patients with Crohn's disease has often identified MAP in the negative ulcerative colitis controls as well, suggesting ulcerative colitis is also caused by MAP. Like other infectious diseases, dose, route of infection, age, sex, and genes influence whether an individual infected with MAP develops ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. The apparent opposite role of smoking increasing the risk of Crohn's disease while decreasing the risk of ulcerative colitis explained by a more careful review of the literature that reveals smoking causes an increase in both diseases, but switches the phenotype from ulcerative colitis to Crohn's disease. MAP as the sole etiologic agent of both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease explains their common epidemiology, uh, geographic distribution, and familiar and sporadic clusters providing a unified hypothesis for the prevention and cure of the no longer idiopathic inflammatory bowel disease, idiopathic meaning unknown cause. So Pierce is saying it's not an unknown cause. In most cases of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, the cause is mycobacterium avian tuberculosis. It's caused by having a lot of these mycobacterium in your digestive tract, which are known to produce toxins or known to cause inflammation, and they're not probiotic bacteria found in the human digestive tract. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are chronic diseases of the gastrointestinal tract and together are usually referred to as idiopathic inflammatory bowel disease. The word idiopathic means of unknown cause because the currently accepted theory a cause of these disease postulates a, ne postulates a nebulous combination of immune dysfunction or dysbiosis. An otherwise normal constituents of the commensal extracellular luminar gut bacteria leaking through a normal permeable mucosal layer and genetically predisposed individuals. Just exactly like I said, people with you know, genes that make them success susceptible to MAP, a dysbiosis and infection, when it takes root of a person's digestive tract. 
it will colonize, it will increase colonies, it will release toxins, and it will cause inflammation at the gut layer, which will open up the gut junctions and allow both the bacteria and the toxins that it produces to go through the, the, you know, the mucosal area and get into the bloodstream and cause a lot of havoc. The main alternative theory of Crohn's disease causation is affected with a faculative intracellular bacterium, Mycobacterium avium subspecies paratuberculosis. MAP causes a chronic disease of intestines in a variety of animals, including non-human primates, that share some histologic similarities to the changes found in Crohn's disease. The commentary, this commentary proposes ulcerative class is also caused by MAP, the epidemiologically, epidemiology, Ge geographic distribution and clusters, both sporadic and familial, of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are consistent with MAP as a single etiologic agent of both diseases. Like other infectious diseases, a variety of factors including dose, route of, route of infection, age, sex, and genes influence whether a person infected with MAP develops ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. So there seems to be a difference between the amount when you're um, ingesting, I have that all in my blog, uh, when you will develop either condition, how you will develop either condition if you're susceptible to MAP dysbiosis and infection. So if you have MAP dysbiosis and infection, what, what should you do? It's very difficult to uh, reduce. I will say in most cases, the first thing that you can do is just stop the ingestion of all ruminant animal meat and all ruminant animal dairy, being sheep, goat, cow, buffalo, um, deer, uh, because you just don't know um, lamb. You just don't know. You don't know if, if 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 they are infected or not and if they are increasing your infection load. You should also make sure that the water that you're ingesting is pure by using either a reverse osmosis system or using water distillation system uh, because that's another way uh, to infect yourself with MAP is if you live in a rural area and you have well water from farm runoff, Getting into the wells or possibly untreated, prop, um, properly untreated municipal, municipal uh, water uh, can lead to um, can lead to MAP infection or worsening of MAP dysbiosis. Um, so you also want to make sure that your fruits and vegetables that you wash um, them very well because they also may be contaminated with MAP. You see that a lot with different other bacteria. In the common way that we farm through factory farming, that other bacteria also end up, uh, other bacterial infections also seem to happen very frequently, um, especially E. coli dysbiosis from ingesting of improperly uh, washed and treated um, lettuce, for example, like the romaine lettuce um, E. coli outbreak that happened last year. So you want to make sure that you, and I have a video, I'll link it to the show notes of how I. Uh, clean my produce thoroughly before ingestion um, and so those are things that you can do to limit yourself from becoming infected or reinfected or increasing your colony forming units of what you're ingesting of these mycobacterium and for some people that may put them in remission right then and there not always though it depends on a person's genes and how severe the immune system is dysregulated and how much of a dysbiosis of map they're really dealing with in that case then i recommend contacting me with co for coaching i have information about what jason and i uh, have done a, a podcast on map i will link that in the show notes um, and you know there's information on my blog of, of what can be done my book also has a protocol for map too as well um, and ultra, for both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. A brief couple of things that people can do to try to get themselves a remission is one is just reduce inflammation. Omega-3 fatty acid ingestion, uh, which are found in, uh, you know, wild caught seafood. Uh, it can be very beneficial of ingesting that a couple of times a week or more, especially, you know, your salmon, your low mercury tuna, uh, sh you know, shellfish like shrimp, <coughs> if you can tolerate them. Um, cod, um, all of those would be good. Um, it would also help reduce inflammation within the gut and help regulate the immune system properly. Um, for others, you know, just um, proper sunlight exposure, um, help uh, regulate the immune system, proper circadian rhythm, um, just, you know, changing your diet to more natural diet, like the perfect health diet and trying to eat more organic, but to take out ruminant animals, don't ingest ruminant animals when you're following the perfect health diet. All of those things may help. Um, 
There are certain uh, supplements that you could take, like zinc carnosine. Zinc carnosine will help close the gut, gut junction, so your gut will not be as permeable. Um, but yes, if you do require antimicrobial agents, I do have a good list um, on my in, in my book that you can use against MAP um, to hopefully overcome ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, um, or um, uh, the antibiotic rifabutin. Arifibutin has been shown with good success to treat mycobacterium avium paratuberculosis, but you have to take it long term, and there's some side effects associated with it. Well, uh, my son's former occupational therapist, when my son was still living, uh, he had ulcerative class, almost to the point where they were going to take out his colon. Uh, 5-ASA or mesalamine was not reducing the inflammation. Um, I put him on, I, I told him to give up all ruminant animal products and dairy, put him on a low inflammatory diet like the autoimmune a AAP. Um, you know, started having grounding and getting sunlight and drinking clean water and high dose omega-3 with also with a CBD and uh, supplementation and he went into remission. I had also my, my son's good friend, uh, he had Crohn's disease, uh, did a similar less extensive protocol with him. I had him give up all ruminant animal products and dairy, had him clean up his circadian rhythm and get, you know, drink clean water and get proper sunlight, had him supplement with magnesium, make sure he's getting enough omega-3 fatty acids in place, had him take a, a, the human milk uh, oligosaccharide prebiotic 2-FL, and had him take uh, um, pomegranate juice, which increases acromancia, and his, his, his Crohn's disease has gone into remission. He hasn't had any problems since. So I've coached many people and helped their Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis go into remission. Um, and there are some very difficult cases. You know, sometimes the immune system doesn't want to help out in the war against MAP properly, or, or sometimes the MAP dysbiosis is very strong and it takes a long time for a person to reduce it so that their probiotic microbiome can, can replenish and rebuild and keep it at bay. Um, but in most cases, for some people, just as simple as cleaning up their diet and, um, you know, following a more healthier diet, like the perfect health diet, or if you're really severe, like the autoimmune AIP diet and, and removing all animal products and dairy from ingestion, removing animal products, it, it, that might be enough. I've seen it be enough for, for quite a few people that I've coached. Um, but that's it for this video. Uh, if you uh, like this video, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. 